Luke Weschelberger. Hopefully I'm not butchering the name. So you're a six-figure Amazon seller. But before we talk about the tactics and whatnot, kind of tell us your origin story of how you got into entrepreneurship. Yeah, so right now I'm 27 years old. We have the diploma up here. I went to Washington <laughs> State University and I studied broadcast news journalism. But I realized getting into the news field would be a little too crazy especially heated, controversial, all of the above right now. And I'd be getting much lower pay than maybe if I set out on my own ambitious entrepreneurial goals. And I've kind of, as you can see it, we have skateboards on the wall. I've been into kind of the individual, individualistic kind of fields for quite a while. I like playing golf. I like skateboarding, all these other things, board sports. I just went snowboarding it's great to do them with friends, but sometimes I realized like in college when I would work on school projects, it seemed like I was the one doing all the work. So mm. when I just kind of cut out, I, it's great to work with teams, but you have to be on a good team. And for me in the beginning, for being an entrepreneur, I liked that I could do my own thing. I'm responsible for myself. So after college, I realized, hey, let's just take a year off, see how everything's going to go. And I actually stumbled upon, upon an advertisement for social media marketing by Ty Lopez. It's a Ty Lopez course. I was like, holy crap, this sounds amazing. We can help uh, hair salons or other businesses with their social media because most of them have crappy social medias, especially busy people like dentists, plastic surgeons, mm -hmm. and they'd be willing to pay three grand, five grand a month for you know you to take care of their social media and drive them new leads maybe through facebook ads so i started doing that but then i realized i can build my own business selling products on amazon and from there i bought an amazon fba course by tanner j fox and i started my youtube channel doing a course review on his course and i've since made over 400 videos about amazon fba how to get products sourced from overseas in from alibaba.com on china for like 10 bucks and then selling them for $45 on Amazon and just having Amazon ship out the units. I thought that was a great way to make money, especially with e-commerce taking off. My course is just, you know, people are signing up left and right at this point. And I even had to raise the price a little bit um, recently just because I've had so many signups, but I don't even run ads to that. And, and people are like, holy crap, man. Like uh, they just see my posts on IG. They're like, damn, a lot of, lot of numbers coming in there. So that's kind of where I started. I just wasn't afraid to start putting content out there. And next thing you know, the snowball effect really paid off. Wait one sec. So did you document, so you said you have 400 videos, right? So did you document your whole journey? You know, not knowing anything to where you are right now? 100%. Just like Gary V says, just don't wait till you're a professional to do things. It's, you know, people like that raw talent that might come out of uh, just someone who's brand new and beginning as opposed to the well-renowned professional that's too hard to relate to, you know? So getting just that raw feedback and just pressing upload without any fancy edits to YouTube, you know, is kind of a daunting thing for a lot of people. But I was like, let's just do it. I'm going to talk about my first shipment and uh, the first product I'm doing and I was doing this and also promoting that other course that I took in the beginning because I wanted to be an affiliate marketer as well, mm -hmm. where you can affiliate market another course or product or service. And then when anyone buys that from my link, I'll get a 20% commission or something. So I was making commissions of that course. And I offer that for my program as well. People can get it, finish it, make a couple of videos documenting their journey. And I really uh, stress for people to do that because honestly it helps you out so much when you're reiterating everything that you're learning and instead of just you know doing it on your computer not talking about it I was downstairs at the dinner table talking about it every night I was and then I'm pressing on with my camera saying hey this is what I'm doing 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 and then you know it makes you smarter and grow faster uh, believe it or not so I have my course with an affiliate offer as well and I'm like hey if you guys get this Make sure to do a little course review video and, you know, talk about your experience with it. And I have other students that have done that and they get a hundred dollars every time they make a sale of that. So it's pretty cool. And do you think that whole process of documenting your journey has helped you grow your Facebook group? I think it's over what? 6.5 thousand. Oh yeah. So you saw the Facebook group too. And man, that's the thing in the beginning. I just started YouTube. I started a Facebook page, a Facebook group. 
uh, Instagram, all these other things. And then when I would have one piece of content, like a video, I could easily share that across all my platforms, even LinkedIn. You'd be surprised at how many resources and connections just start adding you. If you start putting like Amazon FBA in your bio on LinkedIn, I mean, it's unreal. Every time I log in, it's like another 250 people in the Facebook group. Yes. Documented my journey. I would share my videos in my Facebook group and many other Facebook groups. And this is a great tip for anyone listening on how to grow fast. You just take that video. Who's going to watch it? You know, YouTube's the algorithm is really difficult, but when you can get that video and just drop it in a bunch of different Facebook groups, maybe af after asking for permission, people don't want their, your spam videos in their groups, of course, but you know, get those videos out in different groups. People are going to start seeing it and you start answering back and forth questions to people. Your name pops up more and more. Next thing you know, you post a video with your results and people are like, wow, uh, can you help me with that? And then you start making all these connections. So I was blessed to have realized the power of starting a Facebook group and page and all these things way, way back. Cause if you're just starting now, just do all these things now. Don't wait like two years down the road because honestly I paid zero attention to the Facebook group besides just posting my videos in there. You know, I have a lot of other things I'm doing every day, but all of a sudden Facebook, just the algorithm started hitting it in a sweet spot and it just started cycling and getting a hundred new people every day so far, pretty much. So, I mean, look at it tomorrow. It might be 6.6 .6 cause every day it's about a hundred new people request to join it. And, you know, I want to go live in that group more and all this other stuff, but yeah, definitely posting consistently was a reason why everything kind of took off for me. The only real time I hear about Facebook is Facebook ads. Not too many people talk about Facebook groups and what's special about each social media platform. That's its own unique feature. So of course, if you can, if you could create a community, I think the best way from what I've heard from other entrepreneurs from you too, is saying that go on Facebook, use the Facebook group and, build a community there. Now let's be real for a second. How hard is it to build a personal brand, have all this content across different social media platforms while starting a business from scratch? <laughs> that, that's, that sounds really insane when you think about it, but honestly, you don't want to get over overwhelmed with any of this. People will, some of my new students get a little frustrated. They're like, Oh, this seems too hard. I'm having an issue with this or that. You just have to stick it out and start slow in the beginning. But honestly, you just want to get your maybe few platforms that you know you want to hit hard in the bag and be like, okay, uh, if I'm making a video and I really recommend video content, you don't even have to show your face. You can hide your face and just screen record and show buttons you're pressing if that's what you want to do. Um, and then you can go ahead and have that video and just share it on, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, all these other things, or drop stories about it on Instagram. Um, but once you have that one piece of content, you just share it everywhere. So it looks like you're going to be omnipresent, mm -hmm. you know, showing up everywhere at once when in reality, you just spent 10 minutes making a video and you took the work to type out one caption, copy the caption, paste it in all these other platforms. And that's the whole gist of it. It, and, you know, it seems like I do a lot of work, but, you know, it doesn't feel like work to me. Um, yeah. It just feels like, you know, I, I put something out there and now it's just passive. I love this passive income, passive views types of things where you do the work up front and then you post it. And next thing you know, it's just making sales or views 24 <laughs> seven while you sleep. Um, now building a business along with it went hand in hand. It's not like I'm talking about car mechanics here. And then I have to go talk about Amazon over here. No, it's streamlined all Amazon built around one central topic, Amazon FBA. And then I can do a video for Facebook, mm. for Instagram, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, things like that. Mm. And it just kind of fell, the one domino fell after the other kind of thing. So it was really natural. I, I, I want you to feel natural when you get into this stuff, not mm -hmm. Like it's pulling you one way or another. It should be you make one piece of content and now it's naturally able to just be dropped everywhere. So I do want to dive into, you know, your business model, but I have to talk about this first. So you said you went to school for, for broadcasting, right? That was your, your major. Mm -hmm. Now, did you any, did you feel any insecurities about starting a new business from scratch? Not maybe not knowing a thing. Of course you took these courses, but you know, maybe showing a full out of yourself, you know, and, 
people might be ask you, hey, like you went to school for journal for um broadcasting. What are you doing this for? You're gonna look dumb. Um, did you did you have those impressions? How did so you deal with that? Yeah, great question. The best thing you can do when you're starting is just you know if you don't want to tell anyone, don't tell anyone. Make a random YouTube channel handle that no one even knows. You don't, I didn't start sharing stuff on Facebook for a period of time. And it took me a while before actually dropping things on Instagram where I had all my friends from high school and college and everything watching me, my every move. I wasn't just going to come out and be like, Hey, I'm doing this. I, I did it really subtly. Cause honestly, in the beginning, a lot of people I used to work with were like, yeah, that's crazy. You're going to go sell fidget spinners on Amazon. And they, they were laughing basically. And now those people have all bought my course because they've seen the numbers over time grow and grow and grow. And they're like, wow, I can't resist anymore. I must do this, but mm -hmm. just make a channel. Don't even put your name associated with it and just, you know, drop content and do some Amazon hashtags, drop it in random Facebook groups. None of your friends are even going to see it. So I had no fear about that. At the end of the day, you know, we have such short lives and what's it going to matter in like 10 years? Uh, if you're too afraid to get off the fence and do it, then, you know, I would just look for some kind of self-esteem boosting things to get into your life, like hitting the gym, going mm -hmm. for a long run, feeling good about yourself and then pressing onto that camera button. And you don't need to upload the video right away. Just save it if you want. And, you know, at least you did it. But once you do it, my first video was totally crappy. But I said, hey, I'm just going to plug it in and do it anyway. I literally had a broken leg. I broke my leg skateboarding. And that's Jeez. when I took two months off of my job. And that was what gave me the time to take an Amazon course. And I never went back to the job. I'm like, hey, I went in there for like two more weeks, put in my notice. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to devote eight hours to this business instead of someone else's business. And yeah. it paid off tenfold for me. So yeah, let's talk about your business model. So you do Amazon FBA, but do you do wholesale, retail arbitrage? What do you do exactly? So I just do private label and a okay. lot of, you know, there's many different ways to make money on Amazon. Like you mentioned, uh, I started with retail arbitrage, but it's so much more time consuming to go to Walmart or go to a discount price store, scan the items with your Amazon app, which will actually show you what that item is selling for on Amazon. And you're like, Hey, I can get this clearance item for 10 bucks here and I'm scanning it with the barcode. Oh, it sells for 40 bucks on Amazon. So maybe I buy five of those things and then I ship it in, sell it under somebody else's listing. But usually the profit margins are smaller and you're not building your own brand. Whereas when you private label, uh, like I have a product that's actually right here. You, you actually put your, this is a light therapy mask. It's kind of uh -huh. crazy, but you put your own logo on it and I have a logo on my box. This thing sells for 120 bucks. I get it for 45 and it's a really weird random product. So I have many different product research methods I show people because you can't go sell phone cases and things like that. You want to find something that's going to have a low return rate, something that's unique enough so you can actually rank up to page one and get your brand out there. But once you build that brand, you can easily launch other secondary products that are similar to it under the brand, get the brand trademark, build an Instagram for the brand, Next thing you know, you have a brand asset working for you. Just a one man band, you know, that thing, that mask did like 30,000 a month. So Sheesh. in sales and then uh, about 45% profit margin. So I was making like, I make like $52 per sale after Amazon fees at 119 bucks. And uh, so it's like, I get it for 45, sell it for 119, make 52 profit per sale sell 10 of those a day, that's $500 in profit with one product. And you just call your supplier and reorder and they ship it right into Amazon's warehouse. I don't work for Amazon. I am just my own entrepreneur that's selling on the Amazon platform, which, which has all the traffic. I don't have to pay much for ads. Like all this stuff is just there. Once you rank up to the first page, you're good to go. So let's kind of chop it up a bit here. So the first step I think for private labeling is of course you have to do product research, but in reality, because you're doing private labeling, um, you're going to have to get a minimum order quantity from your supplier and that requires some capital. So the first step is to raise how much money do you think ideally? So honestly, you just want to be doing a test order with your first trial. It's not like you're and and every 
secondary order, maybe you're going to add a couple more tweaks to it. You're going to hear the responses from your customers and, and the reviews. And hopefully you've read other product reviews before you got yours. So you know what to improve on based on the bad reviews on other competitors. You can improve from those. Um, but yeah, I just start with about a hundred units or 200 units right now. Amazon's only allowing you to ship in 200 units maximum for a new listing because of quarter four because of covid because of less workers in there so 200 units you know you can even i often start with just 100 units and so that'd be 4500 dollars if i'm buying a 45 dollar mask times 100 units so but my first product ever was really strong magnets um i think they're hanging up right here <laughs> and uh yeah, so I have my little Barcelona keychain on it because I studied abroad in Spain actually too. But th these little neodymium magnets are a really niche, weird product, but they literally hold like eight pounds worth of uh, weight on them. Wait, wait, one they're, second. They're Both really, really strong. So. so I feel that, and in my opinion, let me know if I'm wrong. That's a that's a very generic product. But did you have a marketing angle? You know, maybe maybe did you market to a different niche, different uh, target audience that made you? Um, I made you money here. So what I do to find what's going to work well is I have the helium 10 Chrome extension. So what, what that means is I can go type in neodymium magnets on Amazon. I'm not sure if we can screen share or anything. I could even do a little tutorial or something in a, if you want, but you just go to Amazon, type in neodymium magnets, press this little button, which is going to install in your Google Chrome browser. And then on that Amazon page, it pulls up a box that shows how many sales a month certain products make and how many reviews that these products have and how much revenue they're making and a bunch of other details. So what I saw with the magnets was 300 sales a month, 500 sales a month, just consistent hundreds and hundreds of sales per month for every listing on the first page. And I saw that the reviews were all under 100 reviews. So some guy with 12 reviews is making 300 sales a month and their listing isn't even that good. So from that angle, I knew, hey, I can uh, get these in there. Um, and maybe they were only doing like a five pack of the magnets. I did a 10 pack. I had better packaging. I included an ebook, which is a virtual, you know, little step-by-step -step guide that I set up in my email campaign. So every time someone bought it, um, two days later, an automated email would go out to them saying, here's your free ebook on 50 creative ways to use your magnets. If you're selling anything else in the fitness industry, you can say, here's 10 workouts. And in my main image, which is highly crucial to getting people to click into your product, you have to have a kick butt main image. And I had like an ebook there, I had like 10 pack and then the magnets looking all nice. So my image stood out more, it was better. I ultimately stopped selling these because I was only making like 10 bucks profit per sale and I liked getting into higher ticket items that make like 50 bucks profit per sale or $100 profit per sale. And then you get a few of those a day, you're like, holy crap, that's amazing, so. So is that the name of the game? Because of course anyone can sell these products under the same manufacturer or, or suppliers in Alibaba, but you had a unique selling proposition, which was the ebook. And just the brand itself. Like when you come out with a good looking brand name and branding, you know, they can put a, a $2 product in a $5 package and it, it will sell for like 30 bucks or something because the packaging looks so good or a $2 product in a $10 package. The packaging looks so good. It's, it's a lot of, it's some of that just to get the perceived value up mm. on your product because everything is the same. All the products are the same. You just have to make your branding look better, your packaging, your maybe do a two pack or a, a 10 pack or whatever you can do to differentiate and stand out. That's the name of the game. And Wait, so branding. Yeah. you can actually contact your supplier and have them package them a different way. Exactly. That's, that's how I get the logo on my, my mask, on my box. I have the suppliers customized. They give me a template and I go ahead and uh, maybe of, of the instruction manual, and I just take their template and add in a couple logos, maybe give it to someone on Fiverr or Upwork where I can hire a freelancer for like five or 10 bucks. And then they'll revamp everything and I'll change any of like the, you know, the bad grammar, which is often in some of these Chinese manuals. 
uh, to good English grammar and then boom, like everything's good. A lot of bad reviews on Amazon say the instructions are in Chinese or the instruction, I can't read the instructions. I can't understand the instructions. So avoiding things like seeing what your competition's doing bad and then improving on that is just gonna help you get good reviews and move your, your ranking up and theirs down. Hmm. So you actually have, because I always thought that the suppliers on Alibaba, of course you can negotiate the prices, but you still have some flexibility in terms of what you can package or you can throw in a bundle here and there. So there you have some say in it, right? Oh yeah, hundred percent. And I have uh, party kits where I literally will find <laughs> these balloons are selling well. These goodie boxes are selling well. This design of plates is selling well, all on different listings on Amazon and I combine everything into one. So I send my supplier pictures of each of these hot selling items in this one niche of party decorations, for instance, and straight up, uh, they, they say, yes, we're a manufacturer. We can print those designs, this product for you and combine all these hot items into one bundle. So I get a party kit for $9 and 71 cents and sell it for 45 and people buy it all day long. Even during COVID, the, the, I sold like seven party kits today. And uh, it's a customized bundle again. Um, so very cool. So I feel that in the very beginning, if you're a beginner in terms of being an Amazon seller, you may not know all these tips and tricks. When you first started out, did you hit it off the ground or did you lose money the first couple months? I never lost money with a product. Um, you know, the worst thing that's ever happened to me was I had these garden gloves with claws. It's a weird, see, it's not regular garden gloves. They had little claw diggers on the end of them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, these are doing a ton of sales. So all I did was do that same product that everyone else was doing and shipped it into Amazon. Well, by the time it got in there, 50 other people had the same listing. So then all the prices went from like $18.99 to $15.99 to $12.99. And luckily I got the product for only $2 each. But I ended up being so just, it was so saturated that I actually shipped some home, went to a local gardener and, or a garden shop, and they bought like a hundred units off my hands for me for the, for the spring. And then there you go. I, I made all my money back. I'm still made profit on it. <laughs> so you're selling physical products here. You're not like, your money's not just like in the stock market or cryptocurrency, which I... I, I like, I like those things. Um, I made a lot of money in the stock market and crypto recently, but um, it's not just going to vanish into thin air. You have legit products. You can always go sell them. And as long as you're getting them from Alibaba, when this whole thing costs you with packaging like three or $4 and they're selling for 20 in the United States, you know that you can go sell these on offer up or eBay or Amazon, like whatever, whatever happens, you can still make money with your product. Mm -hmm. So you said you use helium uh, 10, right? And it's kind of like jungle sprout. Are there any filters that you put or are there any key indicators that you make sure that you have on to see if a product is going to be good or not once you sell it? There's a lot of criteria I talk about in my course and I'm mainly looking at are there different brands selling all these different listings? If it's just one or two brands dominating every listing on the first page, I'm like, I'm not going to go compete against these people. Or if there's major brands like Under Armour and Nike, obviously we don't want to compete against them either. But if you're seeing random private label seller brand names, then you know across the board, you're like, okay, well, at least we know we're not going up against everyone big in the big games here. Um, and also it's, it's a fair market. It's not like one private label brands dominating everything. So I look at brands. I look at the price point the products are selling at. I don't want to sell anything under $20. Otherwise, you're not going to make a lot of profit per sale. Um, so I like selling things like 40 bucks, 50 bucks, higher than that. And then I'm looking at how many sales a month. And it has to be consistent. It can't be these top five listings are making like 500 sales a month, but everyone else is only doing 60 sales a month or something. I, I want consistent sales in the hundreds of sales than revenue. I want to see everyone doing at least 5,000 a month um, reviews. Hopefully, you know, there's not more than five people in the top 10 with over a hundred reviews. Um, but even with people with co competitive reviews, you can still make a good bundle 
that's the other big criteria that goes overlooked that helium 10 won't tell you it's like who's making a good bundle here is anyone even differentiating or is all these products the same so when you can make a good bundle people can have 500 reviews and you have two but if you are selling a two pack for only five dollars more than their one pack is then it makes it a no-brainer and people buy it anyway for sure for sure and is there any other aspect outside of the Amazon ecosystem in terms to like enhance your brand? So for example, do you create a separate website, uh, social media uh, platforms or pages? Yeah, great question. Uh, I, I built an Instagram for it. I built a Facebook page and Facebook group. And I have an insert in my packaging for my main brand that says, hey, if you want a 15% off discount, go like our Facebook page and we have a message for you that'll pop up and give you a discount towards your next purchase. Or uh, I just build an Instagram and then do a bunch of hashtags on my products and my posts and make it look like a blogger type of feel on there. And then all these bloggers come and see my posts and they end up saying, Hey, I'd love to try out your product. Can you send me one? And then I'm like, sure. So then they go use their 50,000, 70,000 followers in some cases. They don't even want to be paid. They just want my product. And then I have them buy it from uh, a special URL that I give them that will help me rank for the main keywords. So I'm boosting my ranking up on Amazon. I'm getting a review from them on Amazon. And then they're sharing it with all their followers. So that's what I've used Instagram for, the Facebook group. I can then talk to my customers who have bought and try and get them to leave me more reviews there. Um, and it's as simple as making a Facebook group, which is like a few buttons you press. And then you can do one for any brand that you create. I talk about all this in my course, how to do, how to build an Instagram, a Facebook group, a Facebook page, but really your Amazon sales alone are going to be the, the most of what you're going to get out of it. Like, most of these products make all the money you need just based on Amazon traffic alone, but external traffic's good. I haven't made a website for my brand yet, but I plan to do that. And I can even integrate Shopify with Amazon. So if someone buys my product from my website that I've created through Shopify, I'll have a plugin where Amazon will get a notification and then they will ship it out to the customer, even though they bought it on Shopify. So I won't, I, again, I'm taking myself out of the equation I'm not retail arbitraging. I'm not going and putting labels on things like Amazon's just shipping it out 24 seven. I'm sleeping. I'm waking up. I look at my phone every morning and there's money on it. Like a hundred bucks, $112 I had at 9am when I woke up this morning in profit. And I was like, great. So, and that's every single day for just months and months and months. <laughs> now, if you're, if you have a new product, you have no reviews, you know, nothing like that. How do you, how do you get reviews up? Do you have, do you use pay-per-click ads on, on Amazon or what are some tactics there to really boost your, your sales and, and reviews? So product launching is, I cover that in depth. I talk all about how to rank up to the page one for your main keywords. In the beginning, you're going to want to do a couple of different things to get your first reviews. I recommend having a few friends, more specifically friends of friends, because if you have direct friends, Amazon, is so smart with their algorithm. They'll know that they're in a relationship and they're friends with you and Amazon will take that review down. So I have their friends, like a friend of a friend. So someone I don't even barely know, uh, they'll leave me some reviews or something like that. Uh, I have them buy it through my two-step URL. That's my special URL that ranks me for the keywords. I get five sales under that. I've literally in 10 sales, I've gone from page 36 to page two with 10 sales under a special URL. And with those 10 sales, I'm gonna be getting like 10 reviews from those people that bought it. And then from there, I'm gonna start turning on uh, PPC advertising and just advertise under a few really main specific keywords that I know are my main keywords. And literally I might have five keywords that I'm bidding on. I do low bids and I mean, I literally have spent like $1,200 and made $20,000 on, on my spend. So I, I would, sh I could show you all the stuff in my account if we could screen share, but maybe if we do another video or something, we could do a more tutorial style thing or, or whatever, if you want. Yeah. Me. Wait, wait, what's this special URL you're talking about? I never heard about this. So it's, you can just type in helium 10 gems, or you can go to the Luke W YouTube channel and just type in two step URL on the, on the Luke W YouTube channel. 
but uh, you can literally just put in the ASIN of your product, which is the product identifier. Once you create a listing in Amazon, Amazon gives you an ASIN number and you plug that in and then you, you just plug in your main keyword that you want to rank for and then you press generate and it will just generate you a special URL. When you click on that URL, it just shows your product and it in the search bar on Amazon, it will say the main keywords that you want to rank for. So someone will click on your product as if they just typed in those main keywords. Now they're clicking on your product and they found you through oh. those main keywords and now you rank up from there. It's kind of like boost as crazy then. Huh, that's, like, that's a good way to, you said you went from literally page 36 to page 12, page two, using that tactic? Page two, yeah. And with like 10 sales in a competitive market. So I did that over a period of like three days. So I just hammered, I had a whole list of people. I'm like, hey, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. I paid them back, paid them back, paid them back. And then I did it in a short period of time. So I really spiked up there. And as long as you have a good listing, and some good reviews on it, then your listing is bound to stick there. If you have a good bundle, a good price point, you don't wanna try and rank to the first page if you don't have a good bundle or your listing sucks, otherwise you'll just fall back off the of first page. Cause you have to be competitive, you have to be better than whoever else is, but at least as good or better than like 90% of everyone on the first page. And that's all you're doing. You see all the competition, you're just like, what can I do to beat out these people? and you just do that and whether mm -hmm. it's having a better bundle or a more competitive price different colors there's so many ways to differentiate adding an ebook now do you work with a team do you have vas for instance where you can just help you automate everything everything's automated for me i literally just do the the work up front it takes me about a week or two to find a good product to then you know uh talk to suppliers make a deal create a listing, just a bare bones listing. I need just something really basic. So it's in there. And then I can print the barcodes for uh, that listing, give them to my supplier. The supplier will sticker each barcode on each one of the units. And then they box it up, ship it in there. I, and while I'm waiting for the shipment to arrive in Amazon, I'm adding more photos to the listing and I'm optimizing it. So by the time it arrives, the listing's good. And then it just, I do a little bit of a launch, but that's it. I don't need VAs to do any shipping. You know, when I make an order, Amazon, Amazon shipping it out. It's all fulfilled by Amazon. It's getting prime two day shipping to the customers. Most customers think Amazon is the one selling the item, you know? Um, but it's, it's me selling it. Amazon's doing all the customer service, the legwork, all that other stuff. I don't have to hire anyone to do anything. And I like finding my own products. Some people hire mm -hmm. virtual assistants to like find them products. But if you don't know how to work the business, then by the time you get successful in the business, you don't know how you got there. Yeah. So I really recommend people learn from a step-by-step -step course. That's really the only way to do it. And don't get a course from someone who's just gonna, you know, who has thousands of students because they're not going to be able to help you one-on-one. -on -one. Like when people have questions, they're DMing me or getting on a quick call with me. And I'm able to, even with 300 students right now, a lot of people are making money and doing their thing and don't ask questions, but I get a few questions now and then, and it's me answering it. It's not, you know, uh, the guy who looks like the person, but really it's just a virtual assistant typing on his behalf or whatever. Yeah. So, so you got to look out what you're, what you're doing. And I mean, that's that's a good thing to look out for there so how does your your for your launch your your product images what's your setup for that do you have a special setup to make sure your images look nice on amazon yeah so i have a guy out of uh alberta canada actually and usually you're, you know there's many different ways to do images again i, I show all this in my course and in my in my youtube videos I just use canva.com a lot of the times and it's a completely free website. I'm all about just hooking things up for is like free and like you don't need to spend thousands of thousands to start this business. Like it took me 500 for a course, 500 for my product and like a hundred bucks for images. So I started the business with $1,100 in the beginning. Um, but Canva's free. You can use the images that your supplier has and then just maybe give them to an editor and they'll, cut it out, put it on a white background and make a whole new scene around it. There's 3D renderings they can do. 
and your suppliers have good photos of the images a lot of the times. So you just hand it over to an editor and they'll edit it up for like 15 or 20 bucks an image. Otherwise, you can just take what images the supplier has, take them into Canva, and then just, you know, move some things around and add some text. And there you go. That's what I've done with my party kits. I didn't have to hire anyone. I did all my own images in like two hours. And it was pretty easy. I show everyone how to do that in the, in the program too. So. so the only thing that you really have to worry about or your main focus is just finding products and then communicating with the supplier to get them shipped to Amazon. Yeah. And then creating a good listing and then knowing how to launch the product the second it gets in there. That's all it is. It's, you know, my course is in six separate modules. So it's mindset, what you're getting into with FBA. It's not your everyday, you know, you're going to go into work today and your boss is going to tell you what to do. No, you're accountable for your own self. And that's what you get with skateboarding and golf. You have to produce the results yourself, no one to blame, but yourself. So it's kind of like getting into something that you're going to feel really good about yourself when you do produce results. Cause it's all you that did it. Um, and then, you know, Module two is just setting up your business, getting your Amazon Seller Central account set up. A lot of people have issues with that because they submit their documentation incorrectly. And it's just easy little things that people can look over and then it sets them back weeks and weeks because you know they don't know what buttons to press when they're in Seller Central or something. So get your account set up, all that. I show you how to set up a business bank account, a business credit card and LLC all these other things I talk about how you can get set up and then module three product research module four suppliers. Number five is setting up and optimizing a listing module six is marketing and advertising. And that's where I'm talking about PPC pay-per-click advertising within Amazon, which is a couple clicks and it's set up. I mean, it's pretty easy, but it's daunting if it's your first time, but I've been doing it for four years. So I got it under the books now, but, um, and then even how to set up Instagram, Facebook pages and groups, insert cards so customers can find you and follow you and leave reviews all that stuff's in there so you say you do 1v1 coaching right people can literally dm you call you up okay so from that experience what are you know the biggest mistakes that you that you see um your students do you know the course is so step by step and i literally updated it it took me about two months i went through updated every single video pretty much and any parts that I figured were not that great. I'm kind of a like OCD perfectionist when it comes to these things. And the more perfect I make the course, the less questions people will have to ask. So it's just a win-win on everyone's side there. Um, but you know, with that said, some people will get overwhelmed a little bit with all the information, but the course is about 10 hours long. It's a lot shorter than some of these other ones that just seem to go on for days and days. So at least you have, every module, every video cut down step by step. I just had someone in my Facebook group, the student group say, I bought two courses over the past couple of years. And every time I need to go back and refer to something, it's always Luke's course I'm going to not, not Kevin King's course or something from Helium 10, because the Kevin King course, which I've actually taken as well, like one video is like 45 minutes long. My videos are like five and 10 minutes long, really cut and dry. Uh, but people will get overwhelmed still with that amount of information. And it's just focusing on one thing at a time. You don't need to worry about marketing and advertising if you're just still finding a product. Just focus on that product and then talk to those suppliers. That's all you need to worry about. Um, the other thing is people get pretty far. They might finish the course. They might understand everything. And then they don't pull the trigger. You know, some people will find that product and then they, they won't go message a supplier. And then they want me to like give them the confidence or the advice. And that's really what I do that makes me so inspired to give these people. They're like, oh, I knew that was a good idea. I'm like, yeah, it was. And then they're like, yes, okay, I, I'm going to go do this now. And then they end up getting it in. It starts making sales and they never regret, regret it. So I've never had a refund in 325 students that have taken the course as well. So that's pretty, pretty big. Are there other trends? Because of course, um, I never thought about even, you know, creating bundles or adding a unique selling proposition via an ebook. Now, apart from that, do you see other trends or marketing strategies on Amazon that are very important for anyone starting out? Yeah. So, I mean, really we're moving out of the era of where you can just throw a product up on Amazon and it's going to start selling. We're moving out of that era and into the, you need to create a brand era. 
you need to have the packaging, the logos, the, the images, and if you can do that and create a better offer, that's what you need to strive for. It's not complicated. You can go look at ideas from other great listings that maybe aren't your competitors, but they're great listings that you found on Amazon. Literally take a picture of that guy's uh, images and send them over to your photographer and say, make me something like this. Or go, go to like the Nordstrom website and click through some of their catalog and like get some ideas for some fonts that you want to use when you're starting to type your words make the ele the feel look elegant you can get trademarked i talk about how you can do that within 10 days instead of waiting 10 months if you go through the normal uspto and get a trademark it takes you 10 months but if you do it through amazon you get it in 10 days and then you can use the benefit of enhanced brand content which you can put videos on your listing and enhanced product descriptions and then now you can have a video, which is really going to convert customers to buying your product, give you more personality and more trust in your brand. And you just are able to sell that brand for such a huge more amount. If you've done the trademark, you've built these other brand uh, branded things and social media presences in the background. You can go to flippa.com and see Amazon FBA businesses for sale. I did it the other day. Some guys was only doing 5,000 a month in revenue and he wanted $40,000 for his business. And 5,000 a month in revenue, you can do that in like, like very fast. And so, you know, I have students doing 60,000 a month. Um, one guy had $200,000 a month. He's on my like course landing page. I've done a video with him, Brian Pate. He was doing 14,000 in one day on his sales. And I was just like, I mean, he's blowing my numbers out of the water. The most I've been at is like 35,000 a month. But I mean, I do a lot of other things. He was really focused on Amazon. So more props to him, but I'm, I'm spread around many things, helping people, videos, Amazon, a lot of stuff. But yeah. yeah that's actually really, really interesting because I was going to ask you like, dude, like, of course, Amazon, they can, uh, they can do Amazon basics. They can kind of take your product away. You're in the Amazon ecosystem, right? And it's important to have other variables, other platforms to bring in traffic to Amazon via your social media, right? Or your own website, right? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if you create a brand, you can have a nice exit strategy because you can sell it. Uh, of course, if you don't have a brand, then you can have to rely on, you know, your monthly revenue, whatever's being sold. But of course, you can have that exit strategy if you really, if you really want to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even if Amazon wants to buy your brand, let them like if they're offering you like $300,000 for your brand or $800,000, you know, I have a friend that does a lot of videography and he, this year in 2021, he's going to have a deal with Amazon for filming a really simple commercial for their website or something. And they're going to give them like $250,000 to film the commercial. And he's only been working on <laughs> levels of like, $20,000 budgets. And now he's getting a $250,000 budget. And it's just because Amazon has all this money. So if Amazon sees that your brand or your type of niche is doing really well, they could replicate the same product as you with their own Amazon basics brand, or maybe they just straight up buy your brand out. But either way, by that time, once you have a lot of money coming in through your product, you can go list it on empire flippers or flippa and literally exit strategy, sell out of your business for uh, seven figure exits. Mm -hmm. So what are your different revenue streams right now? So we have quite a few. Um, if we, if we look <laughs> at it like, uh, so we have Amazon FBA, just the products themselves. Within that, I have about eight products and that might do like seven to $10,000 a month in profit. I hmm. even put my profit reports on YouTube literally showing my Google spreadsheets, my refunds, my PPC spend, each products, um, how much I'm making on those. And I do my income reports. And then I have my Amazon course. I have my uh, coaching calls, which are separate from that, that are just random people booking a hundred dollar an hour coaching call. Um, I have helium 10. I have jungle scout where I'm an affiliate and saying, Hey, if you're going to sell on Amazon, you honestly need these tools. Here's how we use them. Here's how we do it. I show you, I don't say go buy the massive package. I say like, get the $18 a month thing. Don't get the hundred dollar a month thing, you know, where I could make more money with that. But honestly, I'm just all about giving people what they need for the least amount of money up front. I'm, I was kind of 
frugal with my money throughout my life. And, you know, with the money I make, like I don't flex out hard or anything. I, I, I might do that at one point, who knows, but <laughs> I just need a skateboard and a good sunny day. And I'm happy mm -hmm. to be honest, but, um, so helium 10 affiliate things, you know, we have, um, the stock market where I'm, I don't really count that in with my income. Um, but that's been growing heavily. Cryptocurrency has been growing. Um, what other little streams of income, even, even just sponsored YouTube videos where people pay me like 250 bucks to, you know, make a video about their product or their software. I've, I've done a few of those. Um, YouTube ad revenue itself pays about $400 a month. And I'm literally only doing about 12,000 views a month. But because I'm in an entrepreneurship niche talking about that, and if you put these videos on YouTube and start saying like how he made 50,000 a month or something, Amazon's going to re recognize your channel as an entrepreneur channel. And you're talking about money. So they're going to advertisers are going to pay more to be on your videos because mm -hmm. people are serious about making money instead of like a cartoon where they're going to pay like a few pennies for every thousand views, you know, instead yeah. of entrepreneurs where it's now like a lot of money for a thousand views. So I don't know, six or seven income streams kind of thing. Now what's your total ambition here? Do you want to literally take all these products, all these brands and flip them eventually and maybe get into, I don't know, crypto full-time real estate full-time what's your ultimate ambition yeah real estate's gonna be a big thing but i'm always gonna number one gonna have amazon and building brands this is the most high ticket high earning <laughs> income skill i've ever learned like where i can just produce something out of thin air um you know talk like have an idea see it recognize a good market this is a skill i'm going to be using forever and it's always going to be the skill that's going to make me a ton of money on the back end passively where I can funnel it into real estate, where I can funnel it into the stock market and into crypto because then I'm a business owner and now I'm an investor. And you want to be in the, if you remember Robert Kiyosaki about the employee, the self-employed, and then the business owner and the investor, there's four quadrants and you want to be on the, the right side of the quadrants there because Otherwise you're ending up paying a lot of taxes and all this and that, and it's, it's bad. So you want to be on the other side and big thing. I want to be talking on stages. I want to be getting the word out there. I want to be motivational speaking, Tony Robbins style and something crazy like that. Just health, wealth, relationships. I go to the gym a lot. I have an awesome girlfriend of four years. Um, she's blown up on Instagram and now we, we network and do a lot of things together. And that whole relationship started right as I started Amazon FBA too. So like I got out of college, I was like super <laughs> confused. What am I going to do? Like, I don't want to sign my life away to working for someone else and not really having a new exciting thing going on. But then the girlfriend happened, the, the income, the ambition happened. And, you know, it took me a couple of years, but now everyone's like, how do we do this, Luke? How do we do this? how do we do this? The world's shutting down. Help us. You're still making money and the world shut down. <laughs> That's definitely a good turn of events for you, man. It's like all that happening. And of course, some people might call it luck, but of course you acquired a skill set of sales and looking into markets. Of course, not everyone would have that tactic of, Hey, what can I do to add more value to this product? And you did that and you're reaping the rewards. And then, you know, not being afraid to go out on a limb and put yourself out on the internet. I mean, mm. I, I just put my name on it, but who's, who's going to even search Luke W on YouTube? Like no one would have ever done that in the past. I used to have old skate videos. If you type in my full name, Luke Weschelberger, I have old skate videos there and stuff, but you know, no, I, I didn't care. Like what's someone going to say? Oh, that's stupid. You're making a video about helping people make money. Like, no, you're stupid for like going to your nine to five or something every day and not doing anything about it, even though you know you need to change and you and your wife are arguing at the dinner table every night about finances. No, you need to like, I wish you started this years ago, man, because this is, you know, the way the world's going. And if you look at technology and artificial intelligence, I, there's going to be people like machines flipping burgers and McDonald's instead of people. Employees are going to have 24 seven working machines that they don't have to pay. Like that's just the way things are going, but no one's going to be able to replace the human, you know, 
aesthetics that they have in their mind to create create things and be a creative and create mm -hmm. new bundles and this and that machines don't do that stuff machines sw uh, sweep hallways and flip burgers and stuff and you got to get out of those uh, jobs before it's too late oh for sure now what do you think is going to happen or what do you think the future of e-commerce looks like i mean i'm i made a couple of videos recently just about you know cyber monday black friday how Amazon's just up like 44% or something crazy. Like, I, I don't know, the, or their holiday sales are up like 44% as opposed to last year. I mean, they didn't release their official numbers, but e-commerce is with COVID hitting, man, like people are afraid. They're never, they've been like, you know, it's never going to go back to being the same. And I freaking hate that to be honest, because I hate wearing masks and stuff. Like I, I like breathing and all that stuff but honestly people are now not going to want to go into stores as much they're not going to want to do this as much they're they've gotten used to now for the past year having to buy things online on amazon from the comfort of their own home even even grandma's doing it now it's like <laughs> now everyone has learned how to do this and it's easier than going into the store it's cheaper than going into the store and with one and two day and overnight delivery from amazon like just start learning to sell a product on Amazon and trust me, you won't regret it. Like, that's, <laughs> I mean, it's just sure, going to yeah. get bigger and bigger, man. Like straight up, uh, e-commerce is going to get huge. If Amazon ever shuts down or doesn't allow third party sellers, which they're never going to cut off because we make, I think, is it like 66%, almost like two thirds of the overall revenue generated on the Amazon platform. Third party sellers do that, not Amazon itself. So Amazon loves us. Um, but you can go sell on Walmart. Once you learn, once you have these brands, go sell on walmart.com, take your brand and go throw it on this, uh, platform or this platform. Just like I said, with YouTube and all this, I make one video and I share it all over the place, make one brand, share it all over the place. Yeah. So the key here is not to, I guess, to really integrate everything together. So it doesn't seem like you're doing more work, kind of have a one compatible package for, uh, in that, in that sense, for lack of a better yeah. term. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So Luke, man, I don't want to take too much of your time here. I think we learned a lot about private labeling, your unique selling proposition, and of course, creating a personal brand around the business that you're working on. So if people want to take your course, learn more about you, where can they find you? I would recommend uh, you guys just go check me out on Instagram. Maybe it's Luke underscore Weschelberger. Maybe we can leave that uh, a link here. If you don't yeah. mind. Doing I'll put that. in the show notes. I'll put in the show notes. Yeah. Sweet Andreas. Yeah. Uh, there's that. Um, my course, you could even just Google it, the Amazon seller pro course. And once you Google that, you'll see it. I have some videos telling you at the top of the course, like an eight minute video, just everything that you're going to get in the course, what it's all about each module. I have some student success videos that I've done below. I even have every title of the videos, uh, right there on the page. So you can see what you're getting into. And then you can just sign up from there. Um, but yeah, that's the Amazon Seller Pro course, Luke W on YouTube. You just type in Luke space W, Luke W, and you'll see my entire channel where I've given over 400 videos. Now, the thing about a course versus YouTube, you're not going to have someone one-on-one -on -one helping you on YouTube. You're just hoping that you get the right video. And the videos are just sporadic. It's not like step by step by step. Mm -hmm. It's like, hopefully you pick a video here and then you don't miss something in that's important here before you get to this video over here. There's a lot of little trip uh, tips and tricks. And I mean, I've taken Kevin David's course, the amazing selling machine, $3,000 courses I've been actually given to review. And that's a great thing about YouTube as well. I've been given a lot of courses for people to say, Hey, make a review about this, make a review about this KT nines course. Um, and I, all I can say is like, I don't want to, be bashful or whatever, but like mine is more clear cut and precise and easy to follow than any of the others. And I think maybe the, the broadcast news journalism background helped a lot with that being clear and simple, keep it short and simple. Some of the other ones are just really kind of drawn on a lot of fluff and not professional. And, uh, but I mean, that said, there's still good info, but a lot of them, also have too many students and they won't even be able to like talk to you. So I'm there to talk to you. I'm there to give you the lowest price for a course that offers a more clear and concise package than anything. So 
I mean, if you get it and you don't like it within like a couple of weeks or whatever, just say, Hey, I want my money back and I'll give you your money back. But I've never had someone out of 325 people return it. So that's why, you know, hundred percent guarantee, whatever, like once you get into it, you'll, you'll love it. So, I mean, thanks a lot for having me on, man. For sure, man. And I'll definitely add all those links, including uh, the tools that you use, Jungle Sprout, Helium 10, onto the show notes so people can learn what you're using to find the products and whatnot. Sweet. Yeah, I'll shoot those over to you, all, all the different links after this video. But thanks a lot for everyone watching. Um, really excited that you just hit me up, Andreas, and was like, hey, man, let's, let's do this. <laughs> and uh, have you had other private label Amazon guys on at all or? Just one other person because the other Amazon guys, they do, they did um retail arbitrage or, or drop shipping. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look in the private label, you, you generally make a lot more profit margin. Uh, you're not, I mean, the thing with drop shipping is you are, every time you make a sale, then you have to take that money and give it and buy that product one by one from your supplier who mm -hmm. then ships it into your customer's address after you get the customer's address the payment info you usually have to hire a virtual assistant to handle all those shipments and things and moving parts with amazon private label you're literally just making more money up front you spend less on ads because it's on amazon's platform it's not on your own website and you know they're shipping it out for you so one man band for the past four years and been making exceeding exceeding income like every month almost this year it's crazy yeah, I actually thought that you had a, you know, at least a two, three person team of virtual assistants of some sort, but I guess you're one man band doing all this, which is pretty impressive. Hey, thanks, man. So yeah, Luke, I'll let you know once the podcast is uploaded, it's going to take about, um, 